It also previewed 20 plus years of American military dominance. Within a decade, we would win the Cold War, crush Saddam's army during the first Gulf War, and become the undisputed world power. Things are a bit different now. Take naval aviation, America's newest aircraft carrier, the USS Gerald Ford. It is four years behind schedule and is also not Senator Rick Scott. The USS Gerald Ford is nearly $3 billion over budget, and there are still serious questions about how it would do in the fight against China. In fact, the Chinese use aircraft carrier mock-ups in the desert for target practice to simulate a moving carrier. They put the mock-ups on railroad tracks and then, as you can see, let our spy satellites see the direct hits. We are a long way from the American dominance portrayed by Top Gun. Mike Garcia used to fly fighters from the carrier decks, now a U.S. congressman from California, joining us now from Washington. Congressman, good to see you, sir. We appreciate it. Uh, am I right to say that this is not the Navy and U.S. military of 1980s dominance? No, a lot of things have changed, uh, and, and frankly, our, our technological advantages that we've had, the capacity advantages that we've had over the last, call it, 40 years, especially at sea and power projection from uh, naval aircraft carriers, uh, has been now matched by uh, China, and uh, they have uh, a tremendous amount of capacity. They're building about two ships per month, where we're building about six ships per year, and we're actually retiring more ships in a given year than we're uh, bringing to bear to, to the fleet. Uh, so this is a real problem for us, Leland. We, we're in the hole right now in terms of capacity and rate of change, rate of investment. They're building not only aircraft carriers, but they're building systems to take out our aircraft carriers. And more than ever in the history of uh, uh, naval aviation, our carriers are now more vulnerable than they ever have been, call it 80 years. So this is a, a major national security concern. We've got to be paying attention to this for sure. Uh, the new Top Gun movie comes out in a couple uh, of weeks here. This is in the new movie talking about going uh, into combat. Take a listen. This would be the question. If we end up going to war with China, will that prove true? Uh, we're going to into combat from a level no living pilot's ever seen. Yeah, and certainly if uh, there's nuclear weapons, chemi chemical, biological agents, uh, or just, a, 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 frankly, general warfare, we're going to see uh, a war of attrition, tremendous losses, loss of aircraft carriers in most scenarios uh, with advanced systems. A DF-31 missile that China retains is effectively the aircraft uh, carrier killer. Uh, and so our ships are vulnerable, uh, especially around the Taiwan Straits, and we've got to make sure that we're investing in the defensive How did we lose the edge? that we, we do have. We, we haven't been paying attention, and frankly, we haven't been taking the, the, the Chinese threat seriously enough. Uh, you know, we're, 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 we're falling behind in many uh, domains. Space, uh, uh, naval aviation is one of them, and, but primarily capacity. We have uh, some of the top-line uh, jets with the F-35, the F-22, the F-18 Super Hornet. These are unmatched by the Chinese, but the Chinese are building more aircraft than we have. Huh. So the, the sheer capacity challenge that we have and the volume at which China is building is, is, is the issue, and we haven't been paying attention to this. We need to double down on our investments in the military and make the $750 billion in our NDAA uh, behave more like uh, a trillion dollars or a trillion and a half dollars in order to catch up. Uh, I'm thinking about, in terms of real ability to project force, that we, we're not even really there uh, in terms of the, uh, where our carriers are around the globe, the ability uh, to deploy them uh, in the like. Uh, you, you were on a couple of months ago talking about how there's not even enough money to have our pilots be proficient and fly the number of hours they need to fly every month to be ready for combat uh, against China or against Russia. That's right. uh, is that still the case? Yep. Yeah, in the 80s, we saw our frontline uh, fighter pilots uh, flying roughly 40 hours per month in training scenarios and more than that in combat operations. And when I was in the Navy in the early 2000s to about 2009, we were flying anywhere from 20 to 30 hours. Mm -hmm. And that number is now below 20 hours a month for training uh, naval aviators. Uh, and it's the same for uh, Air Force pilots. We're not getting enough time in the seat, uh, enough time in the cockpit airborne, seeing these very complex uh, mission sets and threat uh, scenarios uh, in a, what's called an A2AD or advanced area, uh, area or advanced uh, access, anti-access aerial denial environment, A2AD, which China poses. The how do you get in? How do you knock the door down and stay in without mm -hmm. being shot down? and fly home and, and complete your mission. This is a very t tough problem set right now. Yeah, and you I, can't I, just I do this about simulators and... and, and who, who we're dealing ahead. with of, of China, uh, and this is really telling between 1986 and today, right? Because the jacket that Tom Cruise wore in 1986 had uh, different patches on it. We'll put them up uh, so you can see that the Chinese have now uh, taken off 
Uh, it has Taiwan, uh, and it also has the Japanese uh, patch on it. Uh, I, I'm thinking to myself, uh, that's sort of emblematic, uh, both of what our lack of abilities are and our unwillingness to stand up to the Chinese, even in a movie. Yeah, uh, and we don't talk about it uh, in, in any real uh, Hollywood settings, right? Uh, China remains our biggest threat. In most James Bond movies during the Cold War, we, we didn't have a problem talking about... Yeah, we about, always fought the Russians. Uh, ...the Russian agents and our Russian-Chinese threats, uh, but, uh, but or, excuse me, the Russian threats. But in this case, China is our number one national security threat, and for some reason, Hollywood is kowtowed to this. They want that market well, they, space. Yeah, they, they want to be able to show their movies in China, and rather than talking about... The real Count national the, security implications. Money, I, of I China. hate to interrupt you, exactly but I know right. I want to get you to the most important part of this interview, which is the pictures of you uh, back on the on the deck flying. Um, do <laughs> we still do, do, do you still have the same motivation factor and the the love of the military in this current generation that's coming in to be inspired in the same way you were with American movies uh, and American TV shows as they were in the eighties? Yeah, I think so. I think America's youth is still passionate. They're still patriots. They want to go do cool things like fly fighter jets and do so in combat operations. To fly an aircraft or fly a fighter jet off of an aircraft carrier in the middle of uh, combat operations is literally one of the best experiences in the world. And I think uh, America's youth and those going through the Naval Academy, West Point, uh, the Air Force Academy, they still look to serve our great nation in our combat arms. But we've got to work on the leadership. We've got to work on the senior ranks, the generals, the, uh, the millies of the world, the Secretary Austins of the world who have frankly lost their way, they've lost their backbone as war fighters, and they're worried more about woke policies right now than actually being able to win a war. And this is a problem. It actually puts our youth in harm's way, uh, and it makes our troops vulnerable, it makes our nation more vulnerable on the world stage, and we've got to pay attention to these, these, uh, these things that we're investing in to make sure that we're investing in war fighter capabilities yeah, the, uh, and not social justice actions. Well, the, the world today and the Navy, as you point out, that uh, you entered into is very different than the one 36 years ago. Uh, Congressman, it's good to see you. Thank you. Thanks, Leland. Appreciate, yeah, appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.